This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. This is the uh, the final lecture on the first of the interest rate risk management uh, chapters. And here I need to explain what we mean, uh, what the benefit is, of what we call interest rate collars. And it does relate to options. Because you saw in the last lecture how we can use interest rate options such that if you're borrowing money, you can fix a maximum interest rate. And although I know I'm repeating myself, if you look back for a minute to example 6, then forgetting all the detailed arithmetic, and for colours incidentally, the nice thing is you won't need them, but I did say that if we used a strike of uh, 94.25, then effectively, even though things won't, won't work perfectly, we're fixing a maximum interest rate of, well, the 94.25 was equivalent to 5.75%. Uh, Agnes paid a premium Uh, she always paid 1.4% more. And in addition, you'd got the option premium. Well, we went for a September put. We were borrowing money. And the premium was 0.19%. So I know I did this before, but it did mean that the maximum in theoretical interest rate I hope this is what I got before, and I think it is, at uh, 7.34%. So in theory, that's the uh, maximum she'd pay. She's limited the maximum, uh, again, uh, because of um, uh, the basis and because of contract size, the actual maximum what she'll actually end up paying would be slightly more, might be slightly less. That we're not worried about when we illustrate colours. But for the maximum theory of 7.34, we call that a cap. An interest rate cap. That's the maximum in theory she'll ever pay. Uh, a cap limits how high your head can go. Um, but if the interest rates move in our favour, we'll pay less and less. That's the beauty of it. Well, that's fine, uh, and I'm saying, I've said, that if you're borrowing money, if you're borrowing money, you will buy put options, and that will limit the maximum interest rate. We'll have an interest rate cap. Uh, the only downside, obviously, is that you're having to pay a premium, and you're paying the premium whether or not uh, you end up uh, exercising the option. So that's a downside. The premium does cost money. I think, I can't remember the figure, we had to pay 7000 and something uh, in example 6, which in a sense may have been wasted. Well, there is a way where you can effectively limit the premium. And what it is, is this. I've said if you borrow money, you buy a put option. Well, of course, there are also lots of people who are depositing money. And if they're depositing money, you wonder why I'm men mentioning these in a minute, but I'll explain in a minute. If somebody is depositing money, they will buy a call option. And I'm sure you can imagine, without me going through all the arithmetic, it works in the reverse way, effectively. And buying a call option, you see, if you're depositing, you're worried about interest rates falling. And so using options, by buying call options on futures, you would limit the minimum interest rate. We call that a floor. 
If you limit the minimum interest rate, it's a floor, your feet can't go any lower. So there's the basic rule. Borrowers buy put options and they're limiting, but they'll get the benefit of lower rates. Uh, depositors will buy call options. They'll limit the lower, the, the minimum rate, but they'll get the benefit of higher rates. Well, go back to a lender, a borrower. They're going to buy put options, and I've already said the downside is that they'll have to pay a premium. But a way of reducing it is this. If we're borrowing money, I've already said several times, we'll buy a put option. We'll create a cap, a maximum interest rate, but the downside, we pay a premium. And you've seen in the illustrations that the way it works, you'll end up paying whatever the actual interest rate is, but you'll claim back from the dealer effectively by buying and selling the futures. Effectively, you're getting back once it goes above the limit. So let me show you a very simple illustration. Suppose I tell you we've bought a put option and suppose um, we've created a cap at 12%. Well, of course, the actual rate could be anything. Suppose the actual rate, uh, it could be, uh, well, let's start from 5. Let's suppose the actual rate is anything between 5 to 15. Well, enough room here. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So if the actual rate is uh, any of those, uh, and we have um, bought this put option, then when we come to exercise the option, well, of course, we won't exercise it if the interest rate is lower than 12. But if the interest rate is higher, we will pay 13, 14, 15, but by exercising the option, we'll effectively get back the difference. So we'll get back 1%, we'll get back 2%, we'll get back 3%. And so the end result, of course, is that if, it's above, if the interest rate is 12, above 12, we'll end up paying a net 12. These are payments, remember. We've got a cap. But what we can also do, I said there are plenty of people who are actually depositing money and they want to buy a call option and limit a minimum interest rate. Well, what we can do is this. Let's us sell a call option. As I say, there are uh, depositors who want to buy this option and suppose we sell a call option, and call option, remember, for a, um, a depositor limits the minimum interest rate. So suppose we sell a, a call option that fixes a minimum rate, a floor, of, let's say, 8%. Well, what's going to happen is somebody's bought that from us. And so if the interest rate is less than 8%, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, if the interest rate is more than 8%, they won't exercise the option. But if the interest rate falls below 8%, well, they've bought the option from us. And so they'll claim from us the difference. So on this call option, if the interest rate is more than 8%, they're quite happy and they won't exercise. But if the interest rate is 8%, 
they'll be claiming the difference. And because we sold them the option, we'd have to pay them the extra. And so if the interest rates are only seven, we're going to have to pay them 1%. They'll get interest at eight. We sold them the option, so we pay them one. They end up getting a net seven. Uh, if they are getting a net eight, uh, eight rather, um, if the actual interest rate is six percent, they'll be getting six uh, percent. But they'd got this option; they bought it from us, and so they'll claim the difference from us. We'll have to pay them two percent. And similarly, if the interest rate was only five percent, they'd bought this option from us, and therefore we'll have to pay them. The difference of three. Now these are all payments, I'm looking from our point of view, but what would be the net result? Uh, if the actual rate is five percent, we don't exercise our put option, but uh, because the interest rate's lower, but the buyer of the call option does exercise it, and we have to pay the three. So we end up having to pay out 8% in total. If the interest rate is 6%, we borrow money, we pay 6% and we don't exercise our option. But the person who bought the call option from us will, and they'll get 2% from us, we'll pay a total of 8 Similarly, if the actual rate is 7%, we're borrowing, we'll pay the 7 we won't exercise our option. It's less than um, the 12%. Uh, but the person who bought the call option from us will exercise. We'll have to give them 7 minus 8, 8 minus 7, we'll have to give them 1%. We'll, we'll pay 8. If the interest rate is 8, well, we won't exercise. It's less than our maximum. The buyer of the call option won't exercise. So we simply pay the interest on our loan at 8, similarly if it's 9, similarly if it's 10, similarly if it's 11, similarly if it's 12. But if the interest rate is higher still at 13, 14, 15, well of course the person who bought the call option from us won't exercise, they're getting far more interest on their deposit. They won't exercise. We, as we've already dealt with, would exercise our put option and end up paying 12, 12, 12. Now you won't have to show that in the exam. Uh, but what I'm showing here, and why, why should we have done that? We've still got our maximum of 12. But by doing that, we've also fixed a minimum of 8. And why? Why? Why fix that minimum? You know, I'm borrowing money. The lower the rate is, the better. Well, the reason is that it's clear I want to fix a maximum, a maximum of 12. I'll have to pay a premium. And it can be expensive. And it might be money wasted. Well, if I'm prepared to accept a minimum rate, here 8%, then I can do that by selling a call option and I'll receive a premium. So pay here as a borrower, which is what we are, uh, we'll buy a put option it'll fix a maximum interest rate, a cap, and we'll pay a premium But to reduce the cost of that, if we also sell a call option, that would fix a minimum rate, a floor. And so if the interest rate drops below 8%, we no longer get any benefit. The minimum we'll pay is 8. But by selling that call, will receive a premium.
And there's the benefit to us, or potential benefit, that it reduces the net cost. I've still got my maximum. The maximum in my little uh, illustration was 12%. So the maximum interest I'll pay will be 12%, whatever happens. Uh, the cap. But as a way of reducing the premium cost, if I want to reduce the premium cost, well, if we're prepared to accept a minimum, which in this case is 8% or a floor, uh, then it'll reduce the net premium. Uh, no, we don't have to do it, obviously, but it's a way of uh, getting the cost down. Uh, and uh, if we do decide to do that, the idea of having a maximum and a minimum is called a collar. This is your collar and it stops your neck moving. A collar is when you fixed a maximum and a minimum. You do it, if you're a borrower, by buying a put and selling a call. And again, the benefit, potentially, is the net premium. Uh, now, if they men uh, can't mention the collars in the exam, it can be two ways. One way could just be writing about them, explaining them, sort of way I've been doing. Uh, as far as calculations are concerned, you could be asked to show an illustration. You won't be expected to go through all the detailed numbers of how the options work, as I did in example six, if they want you to illustrate, this is what they'll be expecting. Look at example seven. It says use the previous example, example six. So the table in example six show how she could use a collar to hedge her borrowing. Well, the way she could do it is this. There are various possibilities because we three strike prices, but let me give you one illustration. To fix a maximum uh, rate, the cap, uh, we would buy a put option. And we've got three choices there. We go back 94.25, 94.5, 94.75. Um, well, to show a different one, let's suppose we bought a put option at a strike price of 94.5. Well, I showed you uh, at the beginning of this lecture and at the end of the last lecture that the theoretical maximum interest rate that would re uh, result uh, because of the 94.5 uh, future of the 94.5 effectively fixes the rate at 5.5 Uh, together with the fact that Agnes always pays more. She pays that premium. What was it? It was always 1.4%. So ignoring the premium for the moment, uh, that would mean that the maximum, the cap, would be 6.9%. I'll come back to the premium in a minute. However, it would mean paying that premium and, you know, it, uh, sorry, let's assume it's still September. Everything else in the question is the same. As a way of reducing the premium cost, she could sell a call option. Now, again, there are various choices. Let's suppose she sells a call option. Uh, at 94.75, that would be limiting a minimum interest rate. The equivalent to 94.75 is 5.25%. Of course, she's always paying the premium, whatever the interest rate turns out to be. 
the, the their extra 1.4 percent and so that would fix a minimum rate selling a call option fixes a minimum a floor at 6.65 percent what about the premium well she'll pay a premium on the put option that we're buying and if we're buying a put at uh, 94.5 a September put at 94.5 if you look at the table is 0.21 percent we've sold a call Uh, sorry, so we receive the premium on the call option. We sold that uh, to somebody else who was depositing money. Uh, and uh, how much premium would we receive? We were, it was a, the, the call option was sold at a strike of 94.75. And if you look at the table, September calls at 94.75 is 0 0.03. And so we'll pay out 0.21 on our option. We'll receive 0 0.03 on the option we've sold. And net 0.18%. And so what's the end result of all this? The end result is we have created a collar and in theory the maximum we will ever pay is the 6.9 we calculated at the cap plus obviously the net premium of 0.18 so 7.08 percent that would be the maximum we ever paid uh, which would be lower than if uh, we hadn't got a collar. You know, if we just bought the option on its own, the premium would have been 0.21. Here it's only 0.18. That's the maximum. And what does the minimum end up being? As I got there, the floor 6.65, but there is the premium. And so the minimum, 6.65 plus 0.18, 6.83. So there is our collar, 6.83 to 7.08. Now, of course, it's not the only option. Let's do, just do one more collar. There are lots of possibilities. Well, not lots, but there are several possibilities. Again, the exam won't want all of them by any means. Uh, they want you to prove you know what a collar is. But let's do an alternative. I can fix different maxima, different minima. Suppose we, at this time, We'll buy a put at a strike of 94.25. Buying the put limits the maximum, the cap. Uh, the 94.25 itself uh, limits us to 5.75. In addition, Agnes always pays this extra 1.4, which is a nuisance which is 7.15. Now, of course, we've got the premium. We'll worry about that in a minute. Um, that fixes the uh, maximum, the cap. Uh, to fix a minimum, a floor will sell a call. Uh, what strike price shall I use? Let's use 94.75 again. Uh, that fixes a minimum. The equivalent is 5.25, together with Agnes's 1.4, 6.65. So we fixed a maximum, we fixed a minimum, but what about the premium? Well, we pay the premium on the put. Well, a September put at 94.25, the premium is 0.19. We receive a premium on the call. The premium on the call 
is 0 0.03. And so uh, this time, oh no, uh, what? Yes, uh, sorry, going up and down, a net premium of 0.16%. And so what is the ultimate uh, maximum and minimum? Uh, we're still paying a net premium of 0.16. So this time, the maximum, if we add on the premium, is 7.33%. 3.1, I'm sorry. Uh, and the, ma the minimum, add on 0.16, is 7.81%. Uh, so here, our collar we've ended up with will be 7.31 to 7.81. What was my previous uh, collar? 6.83 to 7.08. So it's not up to you um, to decide which is better of the two. Uh, here, I actually think that one would be better because we're we fixing a lower maximum at 7.08. We're accepting a minimum, but uh, we're accepting a lower minimum, and of course the lower it is the better. Uh, but anyway, there we are, there's how collars work. If you're borrowing money, you buy a put and you sell a call. You limit your maximum, which is the main objective, but you accept a minimum. But the result is that it reduces the premium, which is payable, whatever happens. All right, there's one more chapter on interest rate risk, but it's something completely different, which I think you'll enjoy. Uh, that's the next lecture.